Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 13th episode of the Wish You Were Beer podcast. I'm Michael Pitzeroos. This is Martin Murphy. Two weird guys who like weird beers. Love weird beers, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we have a make-your-own six-pack of sorts that we will be drinking and talking, reviewing, and chatting about our own personal life stuff while we do that. Yeah. All right, fun. Well, we're going to dive into beer number one. Cool. You are, my friend. All right. This is uh, Evil Twin Brewing. Shocker. <laughs> uh, this is Wet Dream, I, a brown ale brewed with coffee. I don't yeah. think we've ever had that. Brown ale with coffee? Brown ale with coffee? coffee? Uh, uh, we've had maybe. Numerous coffee. We had the light one that was with coffee. That was okay. really good. Oh, yeah. The last episode, right? No, it was a no. couple episodes yeah, ago. Right. Uh, This is a beautiful brown ale boosted with gourmet espresso beans, providing a delightful blend of citrus and spice aroma. The result is amazing, husty, or lusty, sorry, and incoherent. Yes, it's your wildest desires in a can. Only 6%, so we know that it's going to make up for taste, or make up with taste. Yep. Uh, Stratford, Connecticut. I'm surprised we don't have that memorized by now. All right. Just cut my nails, so I have like. Oh, uh, you got like nothing. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so there's uh, two evil twins in the batch today. I picked out all of the beers for uh, this mm-hmm. week, so. I got the snack. Ooh. God, it looks really carbonated. It. Yeah, it does. Oh yeah, that's pretty solid. All right, beer number one. Good pour. Mm. Smell right off the bat. This is like bitter black coffee. Yeah. Okay. It's it's yeah yeah. And it's just like sort of like a black coffee. That's yeah. It's not a yeah. It, a I think the brown drink. ale kind of plays into it a little yeah. bit of making it sort of like that bitter because yep. Yeah. Generally, the darker coffee ales are a little sweeter. Right. It's like... Mm. The smell, though. I love the smell. Really? Yeah. I don't have much to say about the smell. It just smells like coffee beans to me. Yeah. I think it's... Uh, I think the the bitter coffee is playing tricks on me. This almost tastes like an IPA. Um, like... Yeah, it just tastes like bitter coffee to me, like a black coffee. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, with like sort of a nutty. Yeah, beer. like that that brown like the, ale. The flavor. The brown ale part is sweet, right? But then and then it's like this is like a dark roast black coffee, mm-hmm. where a lot of coffee beers we have are like medium like to light roast and like yeah, they're sweeter. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Uh, well, I think it's good. I like it. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get into my topic, and uh, today was our first uh, big day of snow here in central new york so i thought i'd make my topic about snow and just want some random questions about snow okay um so mike what is your first memory of snow oh oh god i don't know i like really all I feel like my memory doesn't go back super far yeah that's fine the one i have in mind it doesn't go back really far either all right um I'm not like an infant right i think i think mine really only goes back a couple of years for your first memory of yeah <laughs> okay mine goes a bit because i don't i don't that, but <laughs> I, honestly like i don't know maybe a little further than that um yeah i just like i honestly okay do you want me to go first? Or? Yeah, you go ahead because right. I gotta think. So I have two memories that sort of like compete. I think like I remember them equally, and uh, the first one is making igloos with my mom. Uh, she used we we had this like um, big plastic container that was probably like this size, you know, mm-hmm. good size, and we would pack it with water, and then leave it outside for a bit all right actually i think she would line it with vaseline so that way it slides out yeah okay. and then we would pack or not pack we would um put water in it and then leave it outside for it to freeze mm-hmm. 
and then uh, when it froze, we would tip it over, it would slide out onto the floor, onto the ground. And we just did this and did this and did this until we had an igloo. Like, a proper igloo. It was That's pretty cool. sweet. And then we filled in the gaps with snow. Yeah. And it, we had a pretty big igloo. This, I think this was before my little sister was born. So, like, my mom, me, and my older sister. I don't think, I don't think my dad, like, uh, yeah, I don't remember if my dad got in the igloo too, but. It fit like me, my mom, and my older sister for sure. And uh, so that I had to be really young then. I had to be like maybe five or six. Uh, and then the other memory I can think of is more of a traumatic memory. Oh, no. <laughs> the first one was a very happy one. The second one, not so much. Um, my house is on a corner. And so what happens to us is you have a plow coming up the street, going by our house. Mm-hmm. And because we're on a corner, all the snow that the plow has been moving up the road gets dumped in our driveway. Mm -hmm. And we don't know why. We've complained to, like, the transport, or not transportation, the... Um, highway. Yeah, the highway department for years and years and years asking them not to do that because, like, even if there's, like, half a foot of snow on the ground that we have to shovel the end of our driveway will be like three feet right. of just straight ice. And mm -hmm. it just goes back into our driveway. It's ridiculous. Um, and it takes forever and it's heavy and it hurts our backs. And right. For years we've had to deal with this. And same thing, no matter where the plow is coming from, the placement of our house is perfect for them to be like, oh, got way too much snow in my, in my blade thing. I'm going to drop it off right here or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, but being a kid and not having to shovel, um, it was awesome because that meant we had like seven foot high mounds of snow yeah. on, uh, on the sides of our driveway. And so we would, me and my sister would dig as far deep as we could trying to make like a sort of igloo thing mm -hmm. and like hollow it out and stuff. Yeah. And I remember one time, like, I just had jeans on. I didn't have snow pants on. It was just jeans and boots and like hat and gloves and a, and a, and a coat. But the key piece of clothing is uh, my jeans. Mm -hmm. I remember having my knees in the snow, just digging and digging and digging for what felt like hours. And when I was done, my knees were like numb. I could oh, not, no. I had trouble like standing up and getting out of the snow because my knees were so cold and so numb. Hmm. And, uh, so that is my second first memory of snow. All right, I've got I've got one actually. Okay. Um, so um, there's one that I remember is sliding down at East Hill, the big hill. Oh that's yeah, there. how could yeah. I forget that? Yeah. yeah. I, so like that's probably like my earliest one because we would go there yeah. when we were really that's little. That's one of mine too. I um, just couldn't remember. <laughs> and then there's the one that I have that's um it's actually not super recent. I would say like maybe early middle school, mm -hmm. um, maybe late elementary school was here. Um, the snow plow, sort of like the same thing, but not as much, mm -hmm. but like the snow would eventually like build way up and up and up and over our mailbox and everything like yeah. that. Um, so at the end of our driveway, we used to take a shovel and dig out a square that went straight oh, just into for the, the snow. Mailbox? Well, no, that went straight into the snow oh. behind the mailbox. That oh, way we okay. could go in and just kind of hang out in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's like exactly what we yeah. used to do. Yep. So yeah, that's pretty much what. Good times. Yeah. Back when like All the cold didn't bother you as much. Yeah. I feel like it didn't bother you oh, as much no. when you were a kid. I, I've got now I, as an adult. I hate like, the cold. I'm like, yeah. give me something warm. You're like aware of it. I wasn't even aware of it. As Mine a kid. started like a couple of years after I stopped playing hockey. It was oh, like yeah, because yeah, it was I just started to hate the cold. Yeah. Like I, you probably didn't and mind I don't it, I don't mind the snow. I love the snow, but like I used to wear shorts in the winter, like all <laughs> the way through the winter. Oh, you were um, one of those? Yeah, I was one of those guys in middle school. Um, I wore shorts, like, all year round. And then, um, yeah, I, I just, like, eventually, like, just grew to, like, hate mm -hmm. the cold. Like, the more I'm layered up, the better. You're right. Because, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. Uh, like, this year, I've actually spent a good amount of money on, like, winter clothes. Mm -hmm. Like, a new jacket, new right. hat. New gloves. I did the same thing. I just and got a like, jacket. it just feels really good to be warm yeah. and prepared. Oh, it's way better. Oh, it's so good. Like, well, I, my winter jacket for the past like four or five years was uh, like a down vest 
it for one layer and then like this barn coat I've had forever and like it I could like walk from my car to class and stuff but like just having a nice proper oh yeah winter coat just feels so good I could like I could wear like a t-shirt under that coat and be perfectly fine right um so yeah well I think that uh yeah I think that'll wrap it up for this segment and well I'm sure we'll have way more to talk about mm-hmm. um because there's stuff like driving in the snow and whatnot. Oh, and I'm yeah. sure you've got yeah, other questions. Yeah, there's a lot more to talk and... about with snow. Yeah. All right. Well, we will okay. be back with beer number two. Uh, Mike's really excited for the next beer, so uh, uh, we're going to get right into it, I guess. All right. And then finish my, finish, finish so my this topic. Is, this is another Evil Twin Brewing. It's a half and half lemonade and iced tea IPA. Lemonade and iced tea IPA. So yeah. like... It's an IPA, IPA with it's an IPA with lemon and tea added. Okay. So it's like an yeah, Arnold so Palmer like a, IPA. Yeah. Um it has 7% alcohol by volume. It's mm-hmm. still Evil Twin. Um yeah. Great 7%, stuff. 7% you said? 7%. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. I'm really excited. Hopefully about this stays cuz I'm hoping tasty. that the sweetness of the lemon and the mm-hmm. iced tea I wasn't expecting this one to be so, like, heavy and thick. Yeah. I don't know if you thought that. It took us a while to get through it. So I thought this would be a good one to use to follow that one. Yeah. I agree. So this is also kind of like a shandy. Oh, I think I put a, a bit more in mine. I think you're good. Because a shandy is... Um, it's a lemon, lemon much. Lemonade and beer. Yeah. Yeah, I got a little bit more than you, yeah, but... That's okay. Yeah, no problem. Right. Beer right. number two. Ooh. That's odd. Yeah. <laughs> it's that's, very that's odd. That's really odd. I don't even, I almost don't even taste beer. All I taste is like, it's like this weird iced tea. It's like unsweetened iced tea with a little bit of lemon. It kind of tastes like iced tea that has gone bad to me. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think these flavors mix well. I don't either. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's weird. I mean, I guess it's okay. Oh, it's really weird. It's I don't, okay. I don't mind it. I think my expectations were really high. And yeah, I don't mind it. It's okay. But I, it's not what I, I thought feel it like would I'm be. I'm tasting three different things. They're not mixing together really well. Yeah. Because um, I'm definitely getting the lemon, the iced tea, and the IPA. I'm getting all three the of those notes. The least of what I'm getting is the IPA, which I'm definitely getting a little me. bit. Okay. I get, I get the lemon first, and then the tea, and then the IPA. Yeah. It's God, interesting. That's odd. It's very interesting. Wow. It's kind of like um. Reminds me of like some kind of fruit juice that like maybe isn't what you're expecting. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Yours is way cloudier than mine, so maybe it's still one of those true. ones that's a little different Heavy on the bottom. towards the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'll dr- I'm drinking it. It almost has like a medicine yeah, kind like, of taste to it. Yeah, I can almost taste like how cloudy it is. I don't know if the camera will get a good shot. Well, of you can you can see straight up there. Like, hold yours yeah, next to mine. Like, like yours is y- way cloudier yours, than mine. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. I don't know why I'm thinking this. Um, now I haven't had a sip for a bit. Now it's like sort of resting on my tongue. It tastes like a mimosa. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Good. I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah. So it does taste a little like a mimosa. And a mimosa is orange juice and champagne. There's yeah. no orange. It's really weird. This is lemon iced tea and IPA. There is but... an orange beer tonight, though. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, okay. And yeah, it's got I'm something else in it that you might not. Oh, might it's not, not the oyster expect. beer, is it? No. Okay. I dread when you get the beer. I dread that there's going to be an oyster <laughs> beer in there every week, every other week. There yeah, will be yeah. one of these times. Mimosas. How is that possible? Yeah, it's weird. There's no oranges in there or champagne. It does kind of have like a slight orangey kind of taste. Yeah, it's yeah. so weird. Yeah, very odd. Yeah. All right, All right. well. Uh, what do you want to talk about about snow? Uh, 
well, we've got a ton of things that we can we can yeah. go into. We talked a little about memories, but we can also talk about like the here and now of like mm-hmm. um, maybe like our plans to do. Like, do we have any plans while it's snowing mm-hmm. out, or like uh, yeah. driving in the snow, or anything like that? Mm-hmm. So, um, um, well, uh, so Trish and I on Sunday or Saturday, Sunday went on a hike in the snow. That was nice. Um, I like going on hikes in the snow. Yeah, Hannah, now Hannah that and I'm I usually up do more, that. I don't mind it at all. Hannah and I usually do that for our anniversary, which is on the 29th. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. December 20th? Oh, yeah. yeah. I know that story. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, so so that... Um, as as for winter activities, I like ice skating. I like um, ice skating, I like going too. ice skating downtown. downtown. We have a really nice open rink downtown. Um, and at Shove Park, like five yeah. minutes away, we also have a nice hockey rink. Um, I go and play hockey there every once mm-hmm. in a while. I haven't this year yet, but I really want to. Yeah. My favorite thing is ice skating by far. I yeah. was like skating before I could walk. Yeah. Uh, my dad taught all of us to skate from when we were kids. Yeah. Um, I started skating, I think, when I was like four or five. So. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Um, Trish and I had, we had kind of talked about plans to like um, go to. Uh, Labrador Mountain for like a day, mm-hmm. rent some snowboards and just have fun. Yeah. Um, we haven't really planned it though. Uh, that's kind of it. Hiking. Of course, it's got to be on trails that are well kept because hiking in the winter is yeah. very dangerous. Yeah. Um, but like photographing in the winter is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Um, there's just a whole different take on You guys on posted things. a cool picture of the uh, yeah. waterfall there. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was really happy with that picture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It came out like... They looked beautiful. I almost wasn't expecting it. Um, the idea just popped into my head for that picture. And and I did some brush work on it in Photoshop, and it came out really nice. Awesome. Um, and it's funny. I Speaking of photography in the winter, like it's, it's such a stark contrast to photography in all the other seasons because... Um, I've photographed uh, Taganic Falls, like, it's probably, like, six pictures of it on my Instagram right now. Mm-hmm. But they've all been, the winter ones and the summer and spring ones and fall ones are, like, all different from each other. The yeah. The summer ones are really bright and colorful and, like, happy and, like, hopeful. Right. And, um, but then the, the winter ones are, like, really kind of uh like mysterious like depressing. almost yeah and uh so i like playing around with that yeah uh, what really about cool. you oh i i look forward to doing the stuff inside like uh yeah i was gonna mention accomplishing that too. projects around the house and um like we got a ton to do around here we have a mm-hmm. unfinished bathroom down here and the tool room there that we want to turn into a bar that would be sweet <laughs> yeah it'd be awesome um so like i look forward to doing all that kind of stuff i love i love being outside during the winter but like i can only handle so much of it i think oh yeah um unless i'm hiking like because <laughs> you're doing something there like yeah. around the house or something i can't just like go outside while it's like i can't yeah. do that anymore yeah like the i think you'll agree with me like despite all this stuff i named it's like arguably the best part of winter is like cuddling up oh yeah just being able to stay inside and yeah yeah like not feeling warm. bad for being inside yeah, like in the definitely. summer growing up my parents were like martin go outside stop playing video games but mm-hmm. in the winter it's like oh i could stay inside and not yeah. feel bad about it yeah <laughs> oh, I'm a dog. oh that's great yeah i definitely mm-hmm. like that you don't you don't feel bad about just like opening a book and sitting inside or something right. and yeah like or it's just not a beautiful day outside popping open a video game and mm-hmm. I've got tons of video game to play and also yeah. tons of books to read, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's always good. We got, we got a little more time. Is yeah. there? So how about driving in the winter? Oh God. <laughs> you know, what's I, your worst story? I, I love driving in the winter since I've had four wheel drive vehicles. Um, I have never had a four wheel drive vehicle. Oh, they're really nice. I've had snow tires though. Yeah. And then on the Sentra, I had snow tires that mm-hmm. were, I had like these monster snow tires that I still have. Yeah. Um, that I love, and uh, yeah, I mean, like my, I don't think I have too many like horror stories other than like okay. going downhill and then ABS turns on and you start sliding all the yeah. way down the hill. Oof, that's scary. 
Um, my worst one has to be driving down to Ithaca to see Trisha and back. Oh, yeah. Uh, where I was stuck in a spot where, like, my car probably couldn't, my old car probably couldn't make it down there. It's an hour and a half drive. Mm-hmm. And my car, my old car was on its last legs at the time. But, you know, that car had snow tires. Mm-hmm. Or I could take my parents' car, which was, like, brand new, but does not have snow tires. So I decided to take my parents' car without mm-hmm. snow tires. And, man, did we get a storm that, yeah. that weekend. We got a crazy storm. And I think I even, I went home Monday morning and like i emailed my professors i was like i can't make class i'm stuck in ithaca in a snowstorm right uh like i'm not driving and um but i did drive home later that day and ooh, it took me so much longer because i was going slow obviously but also uh i like my google maps would tell me to like take a left and so i'd slow down slow down slow down start sliding go right through the intersection i'm like all right i guess i'm not (laughs) and it happened so many times yeah i had to basically come to a complete stop before i could actually make any turns left oh man it was really bad yeah um but i made it home safe obviously this was last year yeah was it during it was it during that one that like just hit us hard like during like that full week i feel like we had a few of those last year yeah but yeah it probably was that one yeah um um there was one time where I had to miss work, um, even with the. I think I had the Tacoma at the time. Wow, really? That um, like I was Did out. Did you have at, snow tires on the truck? No, oh. it was all seasons. But yeah. you just pop it in four wheel and all make right. it through practically anything. But um, we had gotten like a really really bad snowstorm, and I was planning on leaving that night and didn't end up leaving until the next morning. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like, I just didn't want to drive because it was like you couldn't see. Like, it wasn't the problem of not being able to drive. Yeah. Through the snow because the Tacoma would tackle tackle anything. Yeah, right. I remember I had a doctor's appointment one day. And you considered calling me, right? Yeah, because the thing happened where the uh, the snow plows dumped all their ice and snow in my driveway. Yeah. And I had a doctor's appointment in like half an hour, and I wasn't gonna get it shoveled. And yeah, I knew you had the truck, so I was like, "Are you like?" Uh, are you busy? Like, are you, <laughs> can you leave work for like ten minutes to bring me to a doctor's appointment? Because yeah. my doctor's office is pretty close. But right, I ended up getting out of there. Okay, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, um, there was um one really bad snowstorm where my dad drove up to Clarkson to go get Eric, oh, yeah. and he had the Wrangler and the Wrangler that I'm driving now, and he says that he still swears to this day if he didn't have the Wrangler he wouldn't have made that yeah. trip. Ooh, it's so scary. Yeah, like my. My campus is 15 minutes away. Mm -hmm. Like, and that sounds long, but it's just like a straight shot. Basically, you get... It's pretty much totally uphill, too. Yeah. Um, And I got, like, halfway down Howlett Hill, and there is... And so, halfway there, so seven, eight minutes in, and I've already seen two cars, like, on the side of the road. And, like... I was halfway there, and I was like, "All right, no, I'm t- I'm turning around. Mm-hmm. This is like, this is not gonna happen." I had one of those moments when I was going there too. <laughs> yeah. Because like I was in the Centra, and I didn't mm-hmm. have the snow tires on. It was like a while ago, and we just like weren't expecting snow yeah. at all, and we just got like hammered. Well, and Hollett Hill has those massive ditches. On I was the side. I was going up Casson. Oh, okay. And well, that's I, scary I made too. it like halfway up Casson. I was like, I'm turning around. Yeah. I was like, I no, I, I just stupid. Can't make it. Right. All right. Uh, I think we have talked about snow enough. All right. Uh, we'll be back with... Snack accident. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. It's going fast. Yeah. Snack accident. Um, yeah. Oh. All right. Bye. All right. We're back with uh, beer number three mm-hmm. and our snacks and waiting to happen. Martin, what do we have there? Uh, we have the Bronx Brew- Brewery B-Tracks OPP, which is an orange pistachio porter i'm so excited because it's uh, the, that's by far the most out there thing i think we've had yeah i think so you. nothing like what we've had before yeah uh 6.4 percent alcohol uh and we have a slight description b tracks mux must <laughs> oh boy <laughs> much like the flip side of a record our b tracks are the brews that allow our brewers to break from the norm these are the unique rare and often hard to find brews we make on a limited basis we hope you like them. Mm. 
Oh, I, I like feel it. good about having this then. Yeah, I'm it's very cool. excited for it. Oh. <laughs> I think we're good. Okay. I'm kind of hoping for like a... I'm hoping that the pistachio is like kind of prominent. Ooh, it's dark. Oh, it's a porter. Yeah. But yeah, I'm hoping the... Uh, yeah. I'm hoping the pistachio is... I think the is... orange is going to... I just hope that it's actually there, like, like yeah. tasteable. Might just be an orange porter. All right. Okay. Beer number three. <laughs> I've just I got porter. That, I think they filled the wrong can. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing. I it think tastes I, like I, this. I think I got like a slight hint it of tastes orange. Like, it tastes more like this than what is described down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I think I got a slight hint of orange. I need another sip, but I did not taste a single thing in there. What the hell is that? <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> right? They filled the wrong can. <laughs> it really seems like that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me spit my beer. I just got reminded of the time that we said "oh man" at the same time <laughs> when I said that. Oh, man. oh man, <laughs> that was good. No, it does kind of have like a nutty at the end. I'm not getting the it. aftertaste. I'm getting like a slight like pistachio almost flavor. Where, like where on your tongue? Very back. Very back. Very back at the at the very end of it. No. Nothing? No. Yeah. I'm just I getting am. like a straight. <laughs> <laughs> so we awesome. have, we have three Jeeps at this house right now. Yeah. There's three Wranglers. My brother, my dad, and I. And sometimes we just like to park in the grass. Yeah. And that's pretty Which much what fine. my brother just did. I just saw the headlights pulling up <laughs> into the grass, so <laughs> Yeah, this is. I'm good. like not getting any poor. I'm not getting like any orange. I thought I was getting a little orange, yeah, but I'm not I getting feel like misled. Any. I feel disappointed. I am, uh, dude. I'm getting pistachio like a little angry. As, as like an aftertaste. I'm a little angry. Are you? <laughs> you're yeah. a little upset. I about wanted this pistachio. Beer? I did too. I I wanted like orange and pistachio to be like there. It's not even like a porter. It's like a brown ale. I think it's. Mm -hmm. I think. Th I think this tasted more like a porter because of the coffee. Yeah, probably. I just like. I don't know. Barf, barf, barf. All right. I took a big sip. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting a little pistachio. I'm still not. It's like nutty, like at the end. I'm getting hmm. some kind of sweetness, but it doesn't taste. I'm like getting pistachio sweetness like on the front. I got some sweetness on the back, but pistachios aren't even sweet. They're salty. Hmm. I think I'm getting a little bit, but not. it's not like... It, uh, it's not like, hey, this beer's an orange pistachio beer. It's, it yeah. tastes like oranges and pistachios. It Eric, just tastes here. like a porter. I can't. Eric can't beer right now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's it's not my favorite. I'm I'm kind of disappointed. I am too, because there's no orange, mm -hmm. and I'm getting next to no pistachio. You're getting yeah. no pistachio. You're just getting porter. I'm just getting a brown porter. Yeah. Mm, yeah. All, right, all right. Well, hopefully the uh, snack accident today <laughs> tastes a lot better. I'm excited. Uh, maybe, so, maybe after having some of the snack accident, this will get yeah. a different flavor out of this. So this is something you've told me is your favorite thing about winter and Christmas. Can you guess? I have. Yeah, I've told you this is my favorite thing. This flavor, this chocolate? Thing. No, coffee? No, I don't know. <laughs> All right, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm. I don't know if that. I. Tonight. I don't know what my favorite we have... flavor is. Pumpkin? I don't know. No. Apple. No. Oh. We have. Little Debbie eggnog <laughs> cake. Oh, I love eggnog. <laughs> I know. I love eggnog so much. <laughs> I, oh, I'm so excited. I saw those and thought oh of my you. God. <laughs> no way. So they're just like a Twinkie, basically, with eggnog filling. Oh my god, this is amazing. 
this, this is so excited for it. I was. I told Mike I was more excited for his reaction than the actual <laughs> snack. And I, I'm very. Oh, it smells like eggnog. <laughs> I'm very pleased. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> this is even better than I could have hoped. <laughs> okay. Are you oh ready? my god, it smells like eggnog. Can you let me know when you're ready? Okay, not yet. <laughs> You just want to eat it? <laughs> I can't get it. <laughs> I can't get it out. I had to take the cardboard out. Okay. And then I just wrap the thing down. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ready? Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> This is awesome. I think this is the best snacks of it. Oh my <laughs> segment, <God>. yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> you can keep these. Okay. <laughs> Are you, it sounds like you're about to cry. <laughs> <coughs> it's so good. Oh my god. I love eggnog. <laughs> god, it really tastes like it. Oh, it does. Oh my god, the more it settles. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> did you know these exist? No. <laughs> Neither did I until I saw them. <coughs> mm. That is so good. Yeah. That's really good. Good snacks. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. I love it so much. I can't believe you thought that this would be bad. Well. Not bad, but like too bizarre. Maybe. No such thing. Yeah. On this true. podcast. We've had some weird stuff. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I just want to dunk it in rum. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Yeah, you can keep these. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Gonna give the beer a shot. Still just a porter. Yeah. I'm actually getting less. I'm making a mess. I'm getting less out of it than I was. Mm. I'm really excited about those. <laughs> this is the greatest thing to happen to me. Like, all week. <laughs> I'm glad I could do that. Like, you. like since last <clears throat> Monday, this is the greatest thing to happen to me. <laughs> I saw them and it was just so easy. Oh yeah, I love eggnog. I'm really excited about our uh, Christmas special that we're mm -hmm. gonna do because we're gonna record on Christmas evening, mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna have uh, both of our lady friends, uh, Hannah and Trisha, on, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a grand old time. Yeah. We'll probably do our same layout, and uh, we'll probably pick up two of each beer, of five beers, pretty much. Yep. And then um, an eggnog and rum section, which will be fun. Yeah, it'll be more casual. Yeah, definitely. We're just thinking be... for the snack stint, we could actually bake something or... Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Started at the beginning of the episode, and mm -hmm. maybe halfway through, do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that'll be fun. I think that, um, you know, Hannah's got her baking expertise, and mm -hmm. Trish is a very good baker as well. Is she? Awesome, awesome. Here, so, give that, give that a try. I want to see if you're getting anything different. My hands are sticky. <laughs> no, I just mm -mm. didn't. Yeah. No. Nope. I don't know. It's odd. All right. Yeah. Well. All right, we'll get back to you with beer number four and, and uh, our fantasy topic. Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to get into beer number four here and then our fantasy topic, talking about the name of the wind. Awesome, yeah. Um, so, Mike, what beer do we have for number four? Um, okay, hang on one second. We have Flying Bison from uh, Buffalo, New York. I'm going to go mm -hmm. ahead and assume because it's 716, so and that's the whole Buffalo thing. So. Yep. Uh, it's a Buffalo-style IPA. Um, yeah, it's just called the 716 IPA. 6.4% alcohol. Okay. It's 
pretty much it. Buffalo IPA is a crossover of an English and American style IPA. Um, so I think this is just going to be yeah. an IPA. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm I assuming. Don't... Here, I'll bring this to the to the foreground. <clears throat> and I'll use these. Put it right on the microphones. It'll be in focus. <laughs> Didn't... Why am I having such a bad time? I don't know. I do too. It's fine. It's because I'm doing it like you did. Yeah. I still have my collection of caps over here. Nice. Ooh. Oh, yeah? Is it bitter? It smells very bitter. Okay. Well, we're... I think we um, stayed true to our promise that we're going to have a lot of lot more IPAs on the show. Yeah. I think we said that in maybe like third or fourth episode. God, we're doing really bad with these pours and the Oops. smaller ones. It's okay. Yeah, whatever. All right. All right. Uh, take a sniff. Actually, I kind of like that. Beer number four. It smells pretty I'm hoppy. Kind of, I'm getting honey. I don't know why, but I'm getting honey in the smell. Not my not, favorite, but not, not bad. The taste. Yeah, I drink this. It's very bitter on the front, not super bitter aftertaste. Nope. Which is what I don't like about IPAs. Right. I don't too. like the bitter aftertaste. I don't like how it. Lingers. I don't mind bitter on the front. No, me neither. Yeah, if this was at a party, I would drink it. Yeah, it's yeah. my usual. Wouldn't wouldn't go <laughs> my, my wouldn't go out of the standard. way to buy it ourselves, but if right. it was around, I would drink it. I actually might buy it. <clears throat> really? Like, yeah, I actually like, like it. Like if it's not like super bitter. If I could like, if I was at the bottle shop and I could like really not decide on anything, and I saw this, maybe, maybe. I'd well, if it. I was at the bottle shop and I couldn't decide on something, I'd be buying singles like we do now. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I I do like it. I I do too. Um, like we talked about, it doesn't linger on the back, mm -hmm. which I'm just echoing what you said. Like that's my least favorite thing about IPAs is how bitter you, you can front, still taste yeah. them half an hour later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when it's bitter right on the front and then goes away quickly, like I'm that's a big fan fine of, with me. The bitter I'm a big taste, fan. I don't mind. But when it's on my palate for like half an hour, an hour, then I think it's kind of gross. All right. Yeah. I yeah. Don't mind it. Yeah, I do. I do not mind it. All right, so I think we can just dive right into uh, oh Patrick Rothfuss is uh, the name of the wind yes. because we've got quite a bit uh, to talk about here. A lot has happened. Um, we'll probably split this into two segments, and I'll I do a short that, topic. Yeah, I don't think we can explain this in eleven minutes. Maybe I'll do another questionnaire topic, but okay. I kind of like splitting those up. Maybe I'll find something. Yeah. Um, so a lot has happened. Uh, oh, yeah. We are thirty-six chapters ahead from where we were last. I'm exactly episode. double. Yeah. from where i was because i was on chapter 36 and now yeah. i'm at chapter 72 mm -hmm. um martin so i i pulled up the um the wikipedia page for our friend quoth here yeah because uh, because uh, there's just so much that happened that we oh yeah couldn't get the timeline correct and we and we had a hard time uh just trying to figure out what happened when and then every time we would get somewhere we'd be like but also this happened back then <laughs> yeah so we have a nice little timeline there. Yeah, so Mike, where did we leave off last time? So last we left off, Quoth had gotten into the uh, university for th less three talents. Yes. So minus three. So they're paying three. him three talents to get right. to, uh, to go to school. Yeah. Because he has no money. Uh, and he begged them to, to do that, basically, and they um, abided. Mm-hmm. All right, so first thing to happen after he... Uh, we're just going over major events, too. Yeah. Obviously, it's, this it's, book it, is 700 squeeze. pages long. There, we can't squeeze all the We can't in. squeeze everything in. Um, so he makes some friends, and uh, he attends his uh, first class, which is the Principles of Sympathy, which is uh, taught by Master Hem, who yep. does not like him. No, they didn't, don't, they, didn't, they don't didn't like, like him. each other already going into it because Master yeah. Hem was kind he of. He didn't a, like him with the questions when he was asking questions. Yeah, he, he, he just didn't like Sort him. of an aggressive man. Think of like Snape, Professor yeah. Snape from Harry Potter but in the like, first movie. I don't know. I almost feel like he's not going to come through in the end. So. Oh, God, no. <laughs> like, just think like, like first and second movie. It's like. Yeah. Hem yeah, and, like first or, and second. Yeah. Movie like Snape, Snape and Harry Potter just hate. They yeah. hate each other. Yeah. Um, 
And so, uh, but we know Quoth already knows quite a bit of sympathy from his teachings from Ben. Ben, yeah. Uh, and so Quoth, after the first class, uh, he goes up to Mr. Hem, or Master Hem, and he says, I already know all of these sympathy bindings. Like, yep. What can we do something about that? And, and because of that, Master Hem goes into the next class and tells Quoth to come up in front of the class and teach yes. the class because he knows everything about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so and kind of goading him, and he underestimates Quoth pretty much. Yep. Um, because Quoth does know all of his stuff, and he uses an example. Um, to and he makes pretty much a voodoo doll of Master Hem. Yep. And um, puts his foot over some fire, pretty much. Yeah. And gives and does um, a does a binding between the um, the the doll and. The Master doll Hem. and Master Hem, and then with uses... A, with a strand of hair. Yeah. With a strand of Master... He gets a strand of Master Hem's hair and puts it on And the then does and another binding the between the flame and the... Uh, what is that? The brazier? The brazier thing? type yeah. thing. Um, um, which makes the flame way hotter. Right. And, and then he dangles the puppet of Master Hem that he made over the fire and burns Master Hem's actual foot. I don't think actually purposefully. I think he only. I, well, yeah, he so held he it over says the fire that he to just like, wanted to give him a little hot foot. Right, but then it yeah. seems like it actually burned his foot. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because of that, uh, well, Master Ham is very embarrassed, but Quoth is called to uh, a meeting with all the masters after that, of course, because, yep. well, he just injured a master. He used sympathy against a master, master yep. pretty much. Yeah, and that's that's an that's a no no. Uh, and they call this on the being on the horns. Yep. Because the desk that the masters all sit at is shaped as if like a bull was looking at you. The yeah, desk with two would horns, be like pretty its much. horns. Yep. And so you're standing in the middle there while the masters talk to you and it's being yep. on the horns. Yep. Um and he's he, he'll be on the horns quite a bit <laughs> in the as we talk in the future. Mm -hmm. Um so that'll come up again. Uh so Master M pretty much accuses him of doing all this stuff. Yeah, they call it. Middle but fingers. doesn't tell him doesn't tell him the whole story of, because like, right. um, they say that it wasn't, um, what's it called? Malfeasance or um, well, they say it's malfeasance, but they say that it wasn't behavior um, unbecoming of a. They say he wasn't granted. Oh right. The uh, and and then Quoth later like, after he settles down a little bit, he's oh, like, well, I was authorized use of sympathy. Yes. That's what it is. Um, he was like, well, I was authorized because Master Ham put me in front of the class to teach the class sympathy um, because I had approached yeah. him and blah, blah, blah. And then uh, once the other masters learn of this, they kind of turn on him and they say, like, well, what the hell were you thinking, dude? Like, right. And then the charge is dismissed. However, um, he is uh, still charged with two other things, which is um, unauthorized use of sympathy and malfeasance. Right. And the unauthorized use of sympathy charge, they don't really punish him for that. But for the malfeasance, malfeasance charge, he is given three lashes. Three lashes. Three lashes. So they whip him in front of everybody in public. Yep. Now, and Quoth takes a uh, certain type of medicine. I can't remember what beforehand. it's called beforehand to kind it's of kind like of numb himself. Such an I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> and apparently a side effect of that is the fact that he doesn't bleed from whatever uh, wound he's given. Yeah, the the medicine that he takes beforehand is uh, like a blood, the opposite of like a blood thinner. Mm -hmm. And so he's whipped, and of course, uh, when someone is whipped, their skin breaks and there's a lot of bleeding. But because he took this blood thicker beforehand, he does not bleed when he's and whipped, even he, though he is cut across his back a lot. And he didn't faint, and he wanted to make sure that he like proved the point that he wouldn't falter yeah. at all during mm -hmm. the whole thing he has this obsession with like his reputation at this point where like he wants people to think of him as like this uh, right this well because of like almost these enemies that he's already sort of made right his own the only thing protecting him is his reputation so he needs right. to keep that up right so he puts on this show he doesn't bleed for the whipping and then he where most people would faint and and bleed. Um, he stays up. He stays up, and when it's done, he just walks away. And, and he's given the name Quoth the Bloodless. Yes. At that point. Um, and that is like the first nickname we hear of in the book right. when he's talking to Chronicler. So it's nice to know where that, came, that yep. comes from. Yep. Um, 
So after the whipping, he goes to the Medica for treatment, where Master Ar- Arwill has a, uh, a Master student. Master Arwill runs the Medica. Yes. Yep. Um, he has a student treat him. And uh, when Master Arwill figures, he asks, yeah. he figures something is he figures out something's that he going used on, that and, specific thing to make and Quoth tells him that he took this this yep. medicine to make him not bleed. And in return, Master Arwill invites him to study at the Medica, right? To be a, like a doctor, yeah, equivalent, yeah. Um. Oh, also on the horns, we totally forgot to mention this. Oh yeah, he yeah, he he's given the name of a Lear, which mm-hmm. is like the next step up, which yeah. give, grants him access to the stacks part of the archive. Yes. Um. Yeah. Okay. So after that, um. So because now now he can go into the stacks, what he immediately does is goes to the archives, which yep. are split into two sections, the tomes and the and the stacks. The tomes is like for the... For the uh, intro-level students, sort yep. of. And, and they have to, like, request a book. and But the stacks are, like, the actual... The like, actual, like, It seems like 99% of the actual library. Right. And it is just books upon books upon books, and it is described as, like, a city of itself. Yep. And because um, uh, Quoth had taken this drug and he had gotten his stitches and everything like that, he was a little off his wit. Yes, that's a good point to me. Yeah. Uh, so he goes into the archives, and who is the uh, person working at the desk? Ambrose. Yep. Um, and uh, Ambrose tells him there's a fee to get into the a sta- the stacks. It's called a stack fee. Every time you want to go in, you have to pay this fee. Which there isn't. No. Uh, <laughs> it's a talent, which is a lot yep, for Which Quo. was a lot of money for Quo. It was like the rest of his money, but yeah. he figured that it would be worth it because, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and not only that, the stacks are pitch black because if there was any light coming into them, the light over time would ruin the books. Yep. So Ambrose also tells him that he can rent a uh, sympathy lamp. Or a candle. Or a candle. Um, and the sympathy lamp costs, like, what, another talent or something? Something like that. Um, something outrageous. And but, then he just hands him am- the candle. Right. Um, and so Quoth walks into the stacks with a candle and walks around for a bit, looks an, an around. An open, actual flame candle. Yeah. And uh, two other students catch him in there with a candle, and they whisk him out of the stacks, and he has no idea what's going on. Uh, when he comes out, Oh, we have two minutes. Yep, we're good. Uh, when he comes out of the stacks, uh, the kids tell, or the other students tell Ambrose he was in there with a candle, and then they go get uh, Master Lauren. Lauren, yep. And uh, who is in charge of the um, archives uh, and all archive. the books. He's a master archivist. Basically, all, all the information. Yep. And he's, he does and not like the precious flames. to him. Yes. His books are basically his children, so all the books that reside in the university are very special to him. And uh, so he is infuriated with both that he brought an open flame into um, the even, stacks. Even if he was tricked to bring an open flame in, right. he's still and, upset at the fact that... Right. But remember, Quoth is also, like, high on drugs right now. Yep. And he was just whipped, and he is, like, sort of, um, like, hazy and cloudy. He can't yep. think straight. And yep. so while all this is going on, he's just trying... He's doing a really bad job of trying to Talk his explain way that it. Ambrose tricked him into this. Yep. Um, but nonetheless, he is banned from the archives because yep. of this, for having an open flame inside the archives. Yep. And a whole city full of books with an open flame, obviously not a good idea. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we can continue this yes. next time after beer number five. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Welcome back to the Wish Your Beer podcast. We're going to dive into beer number five, and we're going to hit the uh, rest of this, not the rest of it, but the... The rest of what we've got done here right. um, uh, so, in the name of the wind. Uh, so here for beer number five, we have uh, Collective Arts, Rhyme and Reason. It is an extra pale ale, so it'll be pretty happy. I think that's like a step below an IPA. I don't in know. Hop- in happiness, I think. I uh, think 5.7% IPAs, alcohol content. Like there's the pale ales, and then like the IPA is something that where they use extra hops or something. Yeah. Um, from Ontario, Canada. Hmm, Canada or <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, Owen, uh, Canada. On, yeah, I'm getting that. It's Ontario. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any description. No, the collective Arts usually keeps descriptions off, and their can, yeah. their can looking fresh, Ooh, which I, I like. I love their cans. Yeah. I wish someone devised a way to have like. Like 
beer can art framed mm-hmm. or something. Like maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> you got a lot there, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> kept going i was like wait a minute <laughs> i wasn't really thinking <laughs> well once you looked up from the can while you were pouring it you're <laughs> once you were doing this sort of thing <laughs> all right i was just thinking of it like a regular beer i guess i got a little ipa here <laughs> extra pale ale it's- Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to sit for a second. <laughs> this was bad. <laughs> oh, no, we're okay. Oh, this is awesome. Do a, do a little oh. more in mine. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize. Oh, oh. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, yeah, there we go. I didn't That's realize how much That's there. perfect. Oh, boy. I made a mess. Oh, God. I honestly just, like... <laughs> thought i didn't think anything of it i was just pouring i, I was just pouring I it like it. i had my own beer i watched it happen <laughs> oh jeez all right <laughs> let's dive into this all right beer number five well, get, a, get a look at that can right there collective arts rhyme they, and reason they, they do some pretty sweet cans and they always give art credit to the artist on it yeah um antonio segura uh antonio segura donut <laughs> from Valencia, Spain. <laughs> donut. 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 <laughs> donut. <laughs> All right, here we go. Beer number five. Okay. We got to pay attention to the battery. Just adds up. Mm. I like That's it. It's actually a lot sweeter than I thought it would be. I think it may be because I, like, I still have a right lot off of this of on my palate. Yeah. yeah. But I think this is like... I do like it. I like it a lot, actually. Yeah, me too. Mm. It is bitter on the aftertaste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more on the aftertaste than the... Not too bad, though. Oh, it's almost like honey on the front. Yeah. Like honey on the front. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, honey on the front, bitter on the back. Extra pale ale. I like front. that, actually. Yeah. It's not, not too bitter, though, because like we were yeah, talking Yeah, it, it doesn't it. sit too long. Right. Okay, so where did we leave off? We left off at him becoming a Lear? Mm, yes. <laughs> oh. Okay, yep, so he's... Yeah, okay. Uh, so... No, well, hang on. We went back to it. He just got banned from the archives. Okay. That's where we were. And he made an enemy of Ambrose. Yes, okay, so... Uh, and so, remember, his whole, like, sort of quest at the um, university, the entire reason he's there is to learn the name of the wind. That's the name of the book. That's why And he to learn more up. about the Chandri. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, and so, um, the university has a master namer who's, who knows the name of all these things. Yep. And so, obvi- uh, sort of obviously, Quoth looks to him and, and says, that's the guy that's going to teach me the name of the wind. His name is Master Elodin. Um, and so after he becomes an Alir, he goes to Master Elodin and uh, sort of asks him to teach him because he wants yeah. to know the names of all things. Oh, yeah. Somebody says that he needs, like, a certain person. Like, he needs a specific professor to sponsor right. him, sort of. Yeah. So he goes to... He sets out to get this... Get the master name. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he finds Elodin, Elodin one day uh, just walking, and so he c- catches up with him and tells him, you know, I want you to teach me the name of the wind and all this stuff. And he walks with Elodin to um, this massive building, mm-hmm. which is called, um, what's it called? It's Shoot. pretty much like the, the psych ward. Yeah, like of, the, the, of the university. Because Master Elodin is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, and he had apparently gone crazy prior, but then he yeah. also made his way out, mm-hmm. um, which is actually how the prologue, that's actually what was the prologue what? of the book. The prologue of the book was Master Illidan's escape out of that. Really? Yeah. I have to go back and read it then. Yeah. Okay. Because when he talked about how that. he broke the bricks and then used the name of the wind. All right. Yeah. Could, the yeah, prologue was definitely that. that. Yeah. Um. So he's walking with Elodin up to the, the crockery, is one name they call it. Um, 
and uh, he's just begging Elodin the whole time to like teach me, teach me, teach me. And Elodin brings him to this one room, where um, which is the room that Elodin used to be in when he was at this mm-hmm. place. And um, Elodin instructs him to jump off the roof. Or he says like, if you want to be my student, then you have to do what I say. And I say, jump off the roof. Yeah. And Quoth is like. He thought it was all a test, and then he right. thought, like, the test was building up to this point, so he was like, yeah. I have to jump off the roof. Yeah, and he's like, he's going to use the, he's going to call the wind to catch me or something like that. Yeah. That's what I, it didn't say that, but that's what I imagined he was thinking, like. No, that was what he was thinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, so he jumps off the roof. With and then complete, hits the ground hard. Yeah, <laughs> with complete fl- faith in Elodin, he, and he jumps off the roof and freaking... Smacks on the ground And and he actually makes it out with only a broken rib I think is what he says Uh, And so then he is fixed up In the Medica again Uh, I think it even says he's like out of it For a few days or something like that Yeah Yeah. Uh, And so He needs help paying for The next semester Mm Because he has no money His first semester's tuition was negative three and they talents, definitely so. weren't going to give it to him then. And I think right. they made his next semester was two talents, I think it was, yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, but because he's absolutely poor, um, he has no money to pay for it. Uh, and so he finds a... Um, the equivalent money of a lender. loke shark. Yeah, loan shark, sort of. Basically a loan shark in town. Uh, her name is Debbie, and he... Um, they sort of barter, and they come up with this loan for him to be able to... Well, she commission. says that her minimum is four talents, which yeah. is way more than he needs. Yep, and then he barters it down. Um, but she uses uh, her client's blood yes. as collateral. So when they take a loan, they have to give her three drops of their blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because uh, a sympathist can use someone's blood to she was sort of an ex student. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, because someone's blood has like. 100 percent connection to them yeah it's very easy to harm someone by having some of their blood yeah um so he gets his money to pay tuition or no he doesn't he actually he he denies the clone the he, loan he denies first. the loan and he goes out and buys a loot yeah from a pawn shop sort yeah, of which is kind of stupid he sees it in the window and he's, yeah he's drawn to yeah. it and then he spends all his money on the loot and then goes back to debbie and gets the loan and he's like hey yeah okay let's do it yeah uh, and so for the entire semester, he just studies uh, under Kelvin in the um, fishery. He makes some things that's sort of like a mechanics shop sort of place. Yeah. <clears throat> he also studies in the Medica with Master Arwill. And he practices and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's working somewhere. Yeah, the fishery. He's working in the fishery and he's doing classes. Yep. And in the Medica. Yep. Yep. So he's taking on a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, he... His friends tell him about this famous inn in the town across the river called the uh, Aeolian. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a famous inn where, like, all the f- the best musicians around come to play. And <clears throat> right. if you play w- if you play well enough, you actually earn these things t- called talent pipes, which is just a pin that signifies you are a great musician. And, and, and you don't have to pay to play there anymore, pretty right. much. Because um, he had to pay, what, a talent? One talent. Yeah, he had to pay a silver talent to... Um, play there <clears throat> at, like in order to audition for his talent plays pretty much um, and he plays this really hard song and one of his strings break mm-hmm. and he and keeps playing and he gets there's the a woman that joins him in this which mm-hmm. is important the song he plays is a duet yep. and so he needs a female voice to accompany him and, and he was doing <clears throat> it um, what's it called uh, Solo. troop style oh, okay. where he where he played uh, the part before the female vocal Right, twice. just expecting someone to join in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And, um, uh, and somebody does join in. Yes, uh, and so he finishes the song, earns his talent pipes. Yep. And uh, after the song is done, all these people are buying him drinks and stuff. And they give him a lot of money. A lot of like money. Like seven silver talents mm-hmm. worth, I think. And uh, But all he can think of is... Who the person finding out who his yeah. uh, the the woman singing with him was who, who he was does in find. the stand somewhere who he does find at the end there yes and it is uh, no one other than Denna who was the girl. beautiful girl that he fell in love with on his on um, his travel to the university on his caravan yeah. yeah 
So but, him and him and Denna sort of like uh Yeah, you can take it from me. Yeah, him and him and Denna sort of like have like a on again, off again type thing for a little while where they're like going out but then they're not and then yeah, they're going she's out. like kind of mysterious and so like yeah. she's not always available and then, he has to kind of look for her every time he yeah. goes to that town and, and he misses um he misses a date with denna because he jumped off the roof right no oh no because, no, he, because he okay he saved right. fella from the fire he saved fella from the fire there was a fire in the fishery, in the fishery. because um the case that was holding some chemical that was Ex- it it like, broke and then the yeah. fishery burned. And, the, the chemical and, would burn in air, pretty mm-hmm. much. And uh, there was a girl in the fishery who was caught in the fire and yep. he saved her. And he but saved because her, of that, because he was of kind of out of it. And uh, well, he, he woke up date with late Denna. for the yeah, date. Yeah, that's it. And then Denna misses him, but then Denna leaves a note in his window that he doesn't find until way week. after. For a week, and that yeah. broke my heart. Yeah, that broke my heart too. <sighs> When, because he said it was like the twenty eighth or something when yeah. she left that saying, "Let's meet on the twenty third Yeah, yeah, oh, it, it, was it was very terrible. sad. Yeah, um, so he misses out with Denna, mm-hmm. and then he hears about he's I in think, he's uh, in an inn, and he uh, sort of down on his luck, and he hears some he he's eavesdrop eavesdropping on some people yeah. down the bar from him, and they talk about uh, this wedding that was massacred in a town up north and there was blue flame so pretty much all signs lead to like sort of like the chandrian were there yeah um yep. doing the massacring on the wedding mm-hmm. um so quoth decides to make his way there pretty much yep. he takes all of his money yeah spends it on a fast horse and to tr- he wants to be there that day he actually takes out another loan from uh devi yeah for, for it for 20 um, talents. For tw- yeah, for 20 which is talents. Which just, like, ridiculous. Which, but in it, for collateral that time, he tells Devi he might know another way into the archives. Yeah, because he's going to figure out how to get into the archives, yeah. pretty much. Um, he, he's still which can. is kind of scary. I mean, like, <clears throat> that just... I mean, like, that, uh, that's already screaming to me, like, that's how he's going to get kicked out, pretty much. Yeah, like... Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, <coughs> so he gets the fast horse... Which um, he spends way more money than he should have on, right. apparently. But he gets there that day. He does. Which is cool. Yeah. Uh, he makes it there mm-hmm. very fast. And then sells the horse when he gets there. Yep. Because he needs to be able to pay back Debbie. Yep. He was basically renting a horse. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he goes He goes to the, like, the town's inn when he gets there, and he starts asking around, like, what's the deal with this wedding? And uh, the innkeeper was kind of like, he didn't want to talk Very, about it. He was yeah. pretty dodgy. But he did tell him that there was a girl staying at the end who was the one survivor survivor of the, of wedding. the wedding massacre. So he says, so Quoth is like, well, obviously I need to talk to her because if she was the survivor, then that means she saw the shame. Well, well, Quoth went there under the guise of he had a cousin there. Yeah, right. Yeah. And... Uh, he was hoping, oh, I hope that's my cousin. So he goes yeah. upstairs and he finds out this girl to be Denna again. <laughs> yes, the girl who survived this wedding massacre is Denna. Yep, and uh, that's that's pretty much where I left yeah. off. Was uh, he finds Denna and Denna's like, they they have like a slight conversation, but mm-hmm. nothing about the Chandrainer. He pretty right. much finds out it's Denna. They have a little bit. He's of He's kind of sidetracked. And, Once he yeah. knows it was Denna. He sort of he gets sidetracked. He was less on the Chandrian and more on, on Denna. Denna. Yeah. Um, but and then they have a slight conversation, and then, then that's the end of the chapter that I finished. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I can't wait for you to finish. Oh man, I'm gonna do it this week. So, okay. Yeah. It goes really fast. If not by that, Saturday, like, like this whole part goes wicked fast. All right. Um, okay. I mean, I'll definitely have it finished by Saturday. So. Okay. Cool. Uh, awesome. So that is the end of our fantasy name of the wind topic. Um, we'll be back with beer number six in and our closeouts. Yeah, well, my topic oh, a geez, little bit. Oh, jeez, yeah, totally forgot. I've got, like, a little topic that we'll okay. do, so. All right, well, we'll be back. All right. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start beer number six and then uh, do Mike's, I have no idea, and uh, then start Mike's topic. All right. Um, this is... Uh, oh, I see snowflakes. Rohrbach Brewing Company, Rochester, New York, Casey's Christmas Ale. Okay. So this is a holiday ale made with chocolate malt and cherries. So um, I feel like this is going to be sweet, but not like... Mm-hmm. Okay, so I couldn't find an ABV on this. Okay. 
there's at a, all. There's a description on there, but it's there like really like a hard to read. There is like a description. The color, I, you're they, gonna have to give me a break on this. Yeah, sure. Um, our passion for world class craft beer is the sole reason Roback was founded. Um, is still our driving force today. Blah blah blah. I mean, until they start talking about the beer. They don't talk about the beer. All right. They just talk about their love of finding okay different flavors. Um. Yeah, but I don't see a percentage at all. Hang on. That's hang weird. on. Hang on. I'll see if I can find one in this midst of brown. Brown on red. Brown lettering <laughs> against red. Yeah. <laughs> a red can. All right. I can't find it. So there's okay. There's apparently no alcohol right. in here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, you did. I did? I got you. I guess the second time I've gotten beer on my book. Maybe we should put it further back. You should just take it away from me. <laughs> All right. We're good. So that's, oh, that looks pretty carbonated. Thanks for not pouring my entire thing. <laughs> I, we still have to watch that back. <laughs> I just want to see you just start talking as you pour. <laughs> <coughs> So for a little behind the scenes, basically when anything funny happens on the podcast, Mike and I watch it. We watch it. We rewatch it. Like we watched uh, my reaction to the uh, eggnog rolls. All right. Beer number six. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably going to be another watch back moment. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Where we both take a sniff at the same time and go, ooh. <laughs> Why does that happen? <laughs> no. It's so good. I need to calm down for a second. Wow. Okay, I haven't tasted it yet. God, the smell is awesome, though. Mm-hmm. I can just smell those winter spices. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's like drinking maraschino cherry. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. And there's chocolate. God, it's like a yeah, chocolate I'm covered cherry. cherry and chocolate. It's like a chocolate covered cherry. I don't know. I'm not getting like a holiday thing, Me but neither. I am getting chocolate and cherry, which the I'm very happy tastes, with. It smells like holiday. Oh, it smells really good. Like this, with the smell, I'm getting those winter spices, but the taste, it's more fruity. I smell more cherry. Okay. It smells a lot like cherry, actually. Now that I really think about it. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm a big fan. That's good. Uh, I'm the only person that burps. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I blame you. (laughs) Okay, I don't burp enough. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I said it like that. (laughs) I'm the only one who burps. All right. right. You ready for your topic? All right, yeah. Um... I have a very small topic about I just got Injustice 2 for the mm-hmm. PS4, which is a lot of fun. Which is a fighting game. It's a fighting game. A it's DC a DC universe hero, fighting hero game. villain fighting game. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of it kind of made me think back to when you and I saw Justice League. Yeah, a few weeks ago. Sorry for spoilers, everybody, but Justice yes, League spoilers, is... spoilers, spoilers for Justice League. Uh, ju- uh, ju- okay. uh, Justice League... Is when, pretty much an advertisement for Superman. Okay. Let's yeah, put it that when way. When spoilers are done, I will pat my head. All right, sure. Okay. That's odd, but okay. I, well, if I was watching, I'd appreciate it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, spo- like, uh, it's pretty much an advertisement for Superman. Yeah. Like, um, Cyborg, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman are all awesome. And mm-hmm. I think that... Wonder Woman even could have done more in that movie. I feel like everybody other than Superman could have done more in that yeah. movie. Um, but, like, they made Batman, like, grossly underpowered. Well, like, I feel like he could have done... he is. He could have done so much more there, though. Could he? Yes. Because he's got all these gadgets and whatnot that I he just didn't so, utilize at all. I am so tired of Batman. Really? I really am. I, f- I just feel like he could have done I, way more. Because, like, I, I just feel like they put him, like, as this grossly underpowered thing. Because, like, well, literally, during that last battle, he was sitting on a ledge shooting a gun. Yeah. Like, and he's got, like, a, a supposedly a utility belt full of 
mm-hmm. cool stuff. They could have like, had him throwing batarangs for just, that. He could have been doing anything else other than shooting one of their guns. Yeah, during Justice League, when everybody else was doing things to like fight Steppenwolf, mm-hmm. and Batman was just kind of like hanging out because, like, you know, he can't do anything against this cosmic villain i mean he could have done something I, he couldn't have done anything i feel like he could have done something he could not have done anything he definitely could have done like something. i i had like disappointment but also joy at the same time because i am so tired of batman yeah batman is only cool when you put him up against villains that are no more powerful than he is i feel like he was way better in the batman versus superman movie though really i feel like he was way more well, useful because he was more of a tactician yeah, Whereas, which he should like, have been in the Justice in, League. In Justice movie. League, they played him like a tactician, like he was a leader of the group. But like, but he wasn't man, a tactician I, in battle at all. He was right. a dude with a gun. Yeah, he like <laughs> left it to everybody else. Yeah, oh, it was so bad. Yeah, it was very underwhelming. Like with Batman. Like the Dark Knight movies are so awesome I'm, because like the Joker is a real guy. Bane yeah. is like a real guy. Yeah, he's a strong guy, but he's a real guy. Once you put Batman up against yeah. any any sort of like actual like superhero or super villain yeah. with any sort of powers who's not just like a regular guy who right. is either crazy or crazy right like batman fucking <laughs> <laughs> batman sucks he does he does he does no i totally agree with that and so i i felt joy seeing how poorly they used batman because i was like finally like Batman sucks, and this movie, like, shows it so well. Yeah. But I still feel like they could have done more with that. Well, I'm honestly... That movie made me way more excited for, like, the Aquaman standalone. And I gotta see the Wonder Woman standalone and, and like, another Superman standalone. Yeah. Like, it just made me more excited about that stuff than, like, actually... Because, like, when I was watching um, Justice League, like... That's all I could think of. Yeah. Like when Aquaman came on and it was like Aquaman was doing cool stuff underwater. I was like, I cannot wait until he's like doing a movie like that. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, one thing I'll I'll agree with you about Justice League is how it's it's an advertisement for Superman. I felt for most of the movie, the Justice League like it has no chance against Steppenwolf without Superman. And then for in the last when when they revive Superman mm-hmm. and he is able to, to defeat Steppenwolf, I feel like that discrepancy was way too big. And even then, like when Superman was like doing his own thing, because like he had like woken up and like wasn't sure what was going on, and he was going yeah. mad. And um, it took what's her name, the Lois Lane, to sort of settle him down. And yeah, they, that they, was a weird scene. Yeah, and they were like at his mom's house and yeah I, f- um, I feel like the justice league without superman should not have been so helpless like, yes like when super no i agree when that's superman why i think finally... everybody everybody else's power level should have been a little higher yeah because it was just like they were doing terribly yeah until superman showed up when, when Sup- superman showed up superman was he just pummels him into the ground and yeah. then it's done yeah like like like, like he the fights bed, him for like two Stephen minutes wolf was like seven wolf was like a Kryptonian, and then he got the crap kicked out of him. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I feel like there should not have been that much discrepancy between the rest of the Justice League and then Superman. Yeah, because like, because it was like I, that it was like here's a, the entire Justice League, and then here's Superman. Whereas yeah. like Aquaman and Wonder Woman are like the only two characters that could hold themselves. Yeah. Like in the and, comics, and the at Flash. least. We're forgetting and, and about the Flash. Flash yep, yep. And the Flash was in it. And then in Batman and Cyborg, like like the Flash. The, Aquaman, Wonder Woman are like the three. I don't even know about the Flash for mm-hmm. like the, the those two are the two people that could hold them hold their own against right. Superman. Actually, like comic book wise, yeah. those are the only those are the other two that are like yeah. way up there. And then Flash is next, and then everybody else like yeah. down here, like like yeah, <laughs> and Batman's down way yeah. down there. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love Superman, but I feel like they really put him on this pedestal. Oh yeah, where definitely. I wish like. I wish the like that it, it had been the rest of the Justice League fought like as hard as they could, and like like were, they were, were just were barely really squeaking out own. underneath. Yeah, like they were really holding their, their own, but they were going to lose. And then Superman comes around, and he's just like 
just enough to defeat right, Steppenwolf. Right, right, right. Like, like but this like, is them there, like, like yeah. the slight the different. And then Superman shows up, would put them there. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, but what happens in the movie is the Justice League. They're way, way down yeah, here. And they then get Superman their, shows up, and they're way up here. Yeah, <laughs> like, they get their ass kicked only for Superman to come in, and then he pummels, pummels Steppenwolf into the ground. Like, that's yeah. kind of boring. Yeah. And, like, it, I really love Superman. He's probably my favorite DC character. Uh, but, like, uh, like... Aquaman's my favorite DC yeah. character. <laughs> um, but I don't like how they put him on a pedestal, and I feel like it sets a bad precedent for the rest of the oh, like, definitely. Mo- the DC movies definitely. because it's just like, okay, so like um, Superman is the like catch-all sort yeah. of thing. Whatever comes around. I Superman think that's what they're doing right with Marvel. Yeah, At everyone seems movies. equal. We're like... Like uh, up until Thor, Rag- like, like Ragnarok, the, the Iron Man versus Thor, and the Iron Man versus Hulk battle in the Avengers: uh, that, Age of Ultron. That was actually really e- that was like equal. It but was super like, equal. Hulk is supposed to be this invincible monster, and then Iron Man shows to hold but, him. Yeah, his but own Tony it. is able to create a suit that can right. fight him. Right, and then same thing with uh, Hulk versus uh, Thor in Thor Ragnarok. Like Thor is a, the god of thunder, and Hulk is this. Um, Again, an inv- invincible monster. It's sort mm-hmm. of like uh, what happens when um, an, an immovable force meets, or an, in, an immovable object meets an unstoppable force. That was yeah. like the Thor and Hulk fight. But like, it was awesome. Yeah. Like everyone is sort of is equal in that universe. Mm-hmm. I'm sure like Marvel could come up with a story where um, uh, Iron Man gets defeated by like Hawkeye. And like, I'd probably believe it. Yeah. They'd, pr- they'd probably do it really well. Ugh. No, Just, definitely. Justice League was just like, in terms of characters, if you put anybody against each and other, like p- pacing in terms of the power, like, yeah, just I don't not know. Good. Yeah, knowing knowing Aquaman's powers and being yeah. me, I feel like I'm they, psyched for that movie. I am too. I, I, I am like Aqu- so I like excited Aquaman for too. that. Um, um, but I feel like they could have done way more. They could have done way more with him. They could have done way more with Wonder Woman. They could have yeah. done yeah, and like just all of them. Yeah, I feel like they could have, except for Superman. They should have yeah. a little less with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for the Flash. Like, movie like too. bring the gap from here to here at least. Mm-hmm. You know, like from this giant gap to like a small one. Yeah. You know, where uh, Superman pushes out on top. Because now, like our expectation is just that, like Superman's invincible. Like he's right. Like the only way for them to lose is if they just don't have Superman. Right. If they and, well, when the they thing, have Superman, then like the, the thing too be boring, is that like. like the the whole Lex Luthor thing, like when, with him starting the uh, yeah Deathstroke is just a human. Yeah. Lex Luthor is just a human. But I mean, like Lex Luthor could do what he needs against Superman because he knows the Kryptonite thing, yeah. and so like I feel like that the next Justice League movie I feel like is gonna be better. Yeah. Because sure. of that, because of mm-hmm. the fact that Superman's gonna mm-hmm. be. Sort of a little underpowered because of the whole Lex yeah. Luthor having kryptonite and yeah. whatnot. So, um, Aquaman comes out next year. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I got yeah. my Aquaman shirt that I'll wear. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that was our Justice League topic. Yeah. Um, we'll be back with uh, our, our close closeout. Ups. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're done. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right, welcome back. We're going to do our closeouts and uh, our favorites of the night, and we're going to, yeah, okay. plug the social medias and whatnot. Yeah. All right. Um, what was your favorite, Mike? Um, I think my favorite was probably this <coughs> 716 IPA, actually. Um, By Flying Bison. Yeah, which is uh, from Buffalo. And um, honestly, I, I liked it because it was very bitter on the front, but not... A whole lot in the back, which is very yep. uncommon for an IPA. Yeah, I don't mind. Like I said, I don't mind that bitter taste when it's not lingering in my mouth for half yeah. an hour. Yeah. Uh, it was right on the front, and then it sort of disappeared. Yeah, I and, liked it a uh, lot. Yeah. It was very, very good. Yep. Uh, my favorite tonight is going to, going to be the uh, mimosa that was not a mimosa. I did like it a lot. Uh, the Half and Half Lemonade Iced Tea IPA by Evil Twin Brewing. Honestly, once we, once we stopped thinking about it as like a lemon and iced tea yeah. IPA type thing, and started thinking about more of like an yep. orange type taste. Yeah, like it I, made a lot more sense. I took a lot of sips, and then I let <laughs> it sit for a few minutes while yep. we did the topic, and and it just like hit me. That was like, yeah. After letting it settle, I was like, I the ta- I have the taste of a mimosa in my mouth right now. Yeah, like, yeah. And then it clicked, and then like, 
So we didn't we didn't like it when we started drinking it, but then once I start once I started thinking drinking of it. it as a mimosa, I was yeah. like, this is stop, I you this. stop thinking about what it's labeled and start yeah. thinking about what it actually tastes like. Yeah. I think it's That's a very good point. Yeah. I think that happens to us with a lot of beers. It's, yes, we're it so does. focused on what the description is instead of like just how it actually tastes. Mm. Um yeah, like it really is just a mimosa. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, so very good. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, those are our two favorites of the night, and um, no honorable mentions because this this <laughs> this was such a subpar uh, beer episode. Yeah, I that, can't wait to come up with a name for this episode. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, yeah, so go out and follow us on all of our social medias. We're at wywb podcast on everything, everything pretty much Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure if you just search Wish Your Beer Podcast on YouTube, we are the first thing that yeah, shows we are. up. So, um, that's exciting. Excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, this is uh, the end of our third episode. and uh, 13th. Thir- <laughs> wow. <laughs> third. <laughs> Ten episodes off. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, make sure you guys go out there and you drink some weird beers. Yes. All right, bye.